Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today on Thursday, September 22nd, 2022. It is 3.32 p.m. as I speak. Guys, I hope you're having a blessed day. It should be. If God gave you breath and a heartbeat, he had something planned for you today, and the day's not over yet, at least not for me. Don't know what time it is where you're at, but uh, there's, always, there's always work to do, guys, for the kingdom, for God's glory. Not going to be done until he comes and bring us home. I always like to say uh, we're still here because he doesn't have my room finished yet. And that's, you know, in scripture, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. I got to prepare your room. So my room is going to be gorgeous because he's been preparing it for a long time. Amen. Do you guys want to agree with that one? That's the mindset we got to have. But guys, thank you. Uh, out of, you know, this daily devotional, Stand Strong. Today's title is Living Low, Living Low. And our study scriptures, once again, uh, it's Second Chronicles chapter 26, 3 through 19. I believe there's only 22 or 23 verses. So I went ahead and added the first two, and I added the last two to this. So I went ahead and I read Second Chronicles 26, guys. It's not one from I'm familiar with. I, I honestly don't read a lot of Old Testament, but I went ahead and read Second Chronicles 26 just so I can understand and get in the right frame of mind. Just allow the Lord to speak to me what he wants me to say. And uh, I tell you what, Second Chronicles twenty six, it, uh, it'll speak to you if you allow it. If you if you pray, just say, God, let this speak to me. He will speak to you. That's why He's given us His Word. But anyway, Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. That's what's going to be highlighted on the description of this video. And the lead off verse is Second Chronicles twenty six sixteen. The Word of God says, "Guys, there's some there's some names and uh, there's some names in Second Chronicles twenty six you might struggle with, just." Pronunciation is not gonna not gonna take away points. Trust me. If you're getting in the word of God, he's gonna be happy for you. Um, after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. You see that lead off verse by itself, guys? Doesn't doesn't speak much volume, but when you get into that chapter and read it, it'll all make sense. Uh, Marvin Williams, our author, writes this today. Dwight L. Moody said, when a man thinks he has got a good deal of strength and is self-confident, you may look for his downfall. It might be years before it comes to light, but it is already commenced. Amen. Boy, there's so much scripture that'll back that up. Uh, this was true of King Uzziah. He was obedient, submitted to spiritual mentorship, and sought God's guidance, was. As long as he asked God for help, God gave him great success, evidenced by his many accomplishments, and that is in Second Chronicles chapter 26. That's why it's critical to read this, guys, so you can understand what the Lord's trying to say to us through this devotional. Uzziah's life was one of great power and human success. Sounds pretty good, huh? Until he became blinded by it. His pride was evidenced in several ways. He challenged God's holiness front row, by trespassing the temple and presuming upon a position he would never be able to have. He's going to tell God what his position is. Hmm. He, <laughs> oh, my. I know how it ends, God, because I went ahead and read it. Uh, he viewed God's power as good, but not absolutely necessary for his leadership. And, oh, my, my. Oh, good Lord. Uzziah, you fool. Uh, he refused godly correction and counsel, and he bypassed his opportunity to repent. Lord, oh, my, guys. Uh, when God gives us success in any area of our lives, let's not forget the source of our success. And source is a capital S in this devotional. May we choose humility for God gives grace to the humble, and that is scripture. I may look that up and add it to the, the link on this video for our study. Folks, I'm telling you what, there is so, we did a Bible study uh, several Saturdays ago. The, the, the topic was pride, and there is more the scripture and talk about pride in the Bible than what you would think. Pride is nasty. Look at Lucifer, one of God's most beautiful, most powerful angels. Pride was his downfall, and he, he's damned forever. You know, he's eternity in hell. That's what pride got him. Uh, and I know for a fact, every one of us 
maybe we've struggled with pride. Maybe we still are, you know, or we know somebody is very, very prideful. Guys, I know some pastors that struggle with pride or maybe they're not struggling with it. Maybe they just don't know they have it. It's, it's so evident, so clear. And it hurts my, it hurts my heart to see pastors think that they actually did something. You know, I went to this church and I saved so many people and I laid my hands on and I did this and I did that. Guys, that's dangerous. That is dangerous, dangerous, dangerous because the word of God says it is. Look at the uh, background I chose, you know, Proverbs 16, that pride goes before a fall. You got pride, you're going to fall. The word of God says you're going to unless you repent and get rid of that pride. But for pastors, you know, and I'm, I'm guys, I'm, it's time. I'm done playing with it. When a pastor thinks they actually did something, that's sick, that's dangerous, that's twisted and demented, and that's what's wrong with the church. They're, they're, they're feeding wrong doctrine. They're giving their opinion. And it. Guys, man, we just all we got to do is stick to the word of God, the Bible. Folks, I'm, I was not a high school scholar, you know, straight A honor student and all of that. I didn't go to college. I never, ever liked reading. But the word of God, the Bible is about as plain as it gets. It's, it is cut and dry. All you got to do is get in and read it every day and understand who your daddy is. Allow him to speak to you and through you. Let him educate you. Let him qualify you on what you know. Um, just humble yourself for the Lord, guys. Everything, you know, when I was reading this and uh, looking at the title, you know, there's so many times in your life, in my life, I've had people say, you know, oh, you're, you just, you just don't have any self-confidence. You always cut yourself short. Well, thank you. You know, now I'm going to say thank you to that because, yes, I'm going to cut myself short because I can do nothing without Christ. It is Christ in me and through me that does the things I do. The, the uh, I'm an electrician. I've said in a couple of videos, I give all of those skills to God. Those aren't my skills. I didn't earn them. I didn't create them. I didn't magically do them. God gave me those skills. He gave me those skills as an electrician because he's going to use that for his glory, his perfect plan. Don't <sighs> Pride is so, so dangerous, guys, you know. I do take pride in my work, but I know it's not me that does it. You know, I like to stand back and say that, you know, that turned out nice. I'm glad it worked out that way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for getting me through that and giving me the knowledge and the wisdom to do that. Thank you, Lord. Give him all the credit, guys. Don't start taking credit for yourself. That's pride. That's pride. There's people out there that call themselves Christians that will disagree with me. That's pride. Guys, the word I read is very, very plain. We cannot cannot take credit for doing anything on our own god has given us choice but to even take credit for making the right choice and right decision that's a that's a borderline topic right there we might get into one of these days but guys this is a man please please read second chronicles 26 this guy had everything king of Zion had it all and he had it all as long as he was seeking the lord and he knew this but then he got to that point he's like well, you know what i think maybe it's me and maybe i don't need god for all of this maybe i can do it on my own and it doesn't end up well for him. It's uh, it's in that chapter. But guys, just please, I, I promise you, I guarantee you, the more you give God the credit for everything in your life, even if you think he did, it, even if you think it's something you did, you stand back and, man, you know, I painted this room and that really turned out good. I, I did a good job on it. Don't do that. Say that turned out great. Thank you, Lord. Just, just start giving him all the credit. Give him all the glory, God, and you will you will start to see things and understand things. Scripture will make more sense. God will start talking to you more. I promise you that. I promise you that. Is it going to happen overnight? It can, if God wants it to. There's nothing you can magically do. That'd be the prior thing, you know. Well, maybe if I go to a Bible study for this, this six-week course, guys, just, just get in the Word of God every day. Seek Him every day. Get alone with Him every day. Pray, meditate. Start your day with Him. Continue your day with Him and end with Him. But just uh, who am I? Oh, you I, poor fella. He was <laughs> just stuck. Uh, you get in, you get in Second Chronicles twenty six. Uh, you're gonna like the story. I, I promise you're gonna like the story. And just visualize it, and then uh, just compare that to something in your own life, either yourself or somebody you know, guys. So until tomorrow, God bless you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord has to say to us tomorrow. I love y'all.